Okay, today we have the Mongoose Paver. This is a commuting style, a hybrid urban bike that is a 700C, which also equals about a 29 inch size wheel. It is an aluminum frame bike with a chromoly fork, rigid front and rear. That stock is a single front chain ring, seven speed rear bike that Walmart had sold these for a few years in the $150, $160 price range. Now they are on clearance, if you can find them, for $79, so about half off. This bike, stock, needed a number of upgrades, and I will touch on each one of those that I've already done as well as planned to do. To start out with, the frame, I am a person who believes that every frame is the heart and soul of the bike. If you don't have a good frame, you don't have a good bike. And if you have a good frame, you can build on that and work on the components as you go. Now this frame has some nice welds, clean, no errors in the frame. It's a very nice, well-built, well-designed frame. Good geometry, good standover. Now by the good standover, I mean this is about a 30-inch standover. If you were to look here in the midsection of the frame, normally where it's measured, this standover will suit anybody with about a 32 inch inseam or more but the but the uh, cockpit in stock form is far too short and cramped for somebody who is tall enough to have a 32 to 34 inch inseam which is what this bike's designed for I'm 5'10 and it was far far too cramped for me now Again, you see Mongoose is advertising that aluminum frame, chromoly fork. Now, first upgrade you see here on the ground, here is the stock handlebar and stem. If you look, here is where the stem mounts. It has a huge swept back design, more of a cruiser design. And that bend really cramps up the bike and puts your wrist bent so much that it's uncomfortable. The stem, is very short, a stubby little stem that again cramps up the bike even more. These things had to go. I did not even ride the bike without them on there. I sat on it and knew instantly that this had to be done. Which I've owned one of these papers a few years ago, sold it, regretted selling it, and bought another one. It, this is a change I believe anybody who can actually physically fit the stand over the bike is going to have to ditch this handlebar and stem instantly. Handlebar and stem that I replace it with, I've become a fan of Originate components. You can see there, Originate. This is their propulsion space bar. It's the M style, very comfortable on your wrists. Great commuter bar. This is actually a mountain bike bar, but I use it on this commuter bike. And this is a sunlight adjustable stem. I've never been a fan of adjustable stems but this one, let me get that camera to zoom in on that, zero to 60 degree adjustment. It's very stiff, got a nice sturdy build to it, wide clamp back here, wide hinge. Uses a very nice little expanding wedge to lock it in place. No flex, no creaking, no squeaking, no movement that you wouldn't want of any kind does have the removable faceplate. It is a heavy stem. This thing probably weighs about a half a pound, but it is stiff and it does all it's asked for. The Originate handlebar, I got it for $14. This thing is lighter than most of Easton's components, which you see I have an Easton EA50 seat post and the handlebar is actually lighter than the Easton EA50 handlebar that I had looked at. Reason why the Easton post is on there, the standard seat post that comes with this bike is far too short. You see at this extension, stock seat post would only come up to about this height. Cannot get proper leg extension with that height. Proper leg extension is very key to get an efficient ride. And when you commute a lot or ride a lot, you know exactly what I'm talking about. When we were all kids, we rode with our knees almost hitting our chin that's not efficient give it a try and see what see how you feel the uh, drivetrain has not been upgraded I will be doing a later video on upgrading this to a SRAM X5 shifters and derailleur but for now 
this cheap derailleur is another big letdown. If you grab it, you can move it a lot and that causes it to skip under power even when properly adjusted. I replaced the chain already trying to get it to get a little bit better but it just needs a full drive train overhaul to take care of that issue. I do like the single chain ring in the front. Works well, simple, light, nothing to go wrong really. One thing stock that had to be changed instantly is the brake set. I used Originate front and rear linear pull V style brakes. These work great, very comparable to Avid single digit series, which I also have. All metal construction here with a brass bushing and metal hardware uses an Allen wrench as your adjustment screw. Really like that. It works well and I like Allen wrenches because you use them all over your bike anyways. You got the WTB Laser V saddle there and the Sunlight Utility seat pack. This clamps to the seat rails. Kind of hard to see in the bright sun, but it does clamp to the seat rails. Has a quick release attachment. Good storage capacity. I've got a couple tubes in there as well as tire levers, and I still have room to spare. That seat pack was only $7. Most seat packs in that range are more like 15 or 20. So good buy. Got a little blinky light here. When you're commuting, you need good blinky lights. Helps keep seen so you, you can be seen and not hit. Got a sunlight. This is the HL-L170 little LED light. It has a pulse strobe. It's bright enough out. It might be hard to see. But pulse strobe. Steady blinking. And a steady headlight. It's a half watt LED. Doesn't sound like much, but in a city setting it does work just well enough so that you can see combined with the ambient light around. I put on some SRAM grips because the stock grips are horrible. They would slide off at the first sign of pressure. So got some SRAM grips. Again, these upgrades that you're seeing on here are the ones that you must do if you're to buy this bike. Another must do is you must put on some new pedals, the plastic pedals that come with it. They failed pretty much instantly. Bent this left side spindle on the stock ones and the bearings failed on the right side. So got these Eastern, nice big kind of chunky pedals, great grip on flip flops, shoe, tennis shoes, any type of shoe. You don't, when you're commuting, you don't want to be forced to have to wear your clipless style shoes, which I'm not a huge clipless fanatic myself. I use platforms on everything. Got some Jaguar L3 series cables. I love Jaguar. They give you custom end caps. And they give you also these guards, frame guards here with their kits. So I love to use Jaguar. Again, another originate component I love is these little things called super noodles. They get rid of your normal alloy noodle, allow you to run the Jaguar cable housing all the way to the stop. Makes it a little bit lighter. A little bit better braking feel at the lever because it's smoother. Again, only two dollars for a set, so that's a nice little improvement because it saves some weight and makes your brakes feel a little bit better. Another product from Originate that I love. You'll see kind of a Originate testing sled here is what this bike's going to be. This is their Road Light 265 millimeter pump. It's an alloy construction. It has a foldable handle. Let's fold this so you can see that. You flip and fold that so that you have almost the same kind of grip as you would a floor pump. Very nice little pump and again under $10. I use dual alloy water bottle cages because I like the alloy for commuter bikes because you can bend them. I like Jones Soda. It's a narrow bottle. It can fit in there really nice and easy and I can just bend that in so one handles a narrow drink and one can handle the, the standard plus I wear my camel back too. This bike comes with an alloy rear rack in a later video after I've got the drivetrain overhauled I'll also test out some panniers and that'll be probably a sunlight because this is going to be a bike that I run a lot of sunlight and originate components because they're great values kind of like mongoose you know not a big name but they're great value for the money and they actually originate especially has really impressed me with the, the product's quality sunlight 
kind of tends to go towards like the lights, the bags, but their quality is top notch as well, but the price is not top notch. It's a very nice low price product on everything that they sell. Most of the things tend to be half the price compared to the name brands with similar quality to the name brands. And if you have any questions about this bike, again, this is a Mongoose Paver. It's a cheap bike, needs some upgrades to make it where it needs to be. But if you can snag one at $79 at close out before they're gone, I would highly recommend it because this is a great commuter bike. You're going to see this as a project as we go along. I will make multiple videos. If you have questions, comments, anything you'd like to see tested, because this is going to be like a test mule for a number of different products. If you want to see them tested, just leave a comment in the section below. Again, this is Mongoose Jake with the Mongoose Paver. And in stock form, it's about a, a C or a D grade bike, but you can make it quite a bit better with, with not much money tied up into it. Just keep in touch for more videos.